In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my favorite little five wide spacing concept that can really um, beat pretty much any zone defense in the game, especially the meta Mabel coverage that a lot of us are seeing online. This is a great concept to put into your Madden 22 arsenal because it is a concept, it truly is, and I'm gonna be going into a little bit in depth on the vertical hook zone in this video. Now real quick, if you have not already gotten my defensive encyclopedia, what my defensive encyclopedia does, it's good for both offensive minded players and defensive minded players because what I do is I take an in-depth look at everything defense in terms of what the zones do, what they cover, the grid system that Madden has put into this game, how zones react on the short side of the field versus how zones react on the wide side of the field, how zones react whether they're zone dropped or not, how match coverage works. If you want to get access to my defensive encyclopedia, it's really going to help you understand how these zones are actually working. And you can get that down in the description below. I put a link to it. We're going to be working through this and every time that we need to update it we're going to update it so when Madden 22 comes out as long as all the stuff works the same we'll keep it the same but if it's different we'll update it and as we learn new stuff we'll put it in there so it's a one-time purchase of $15 but it keeps getting better with time okay so if you want to get access to my defensive encyclopedia uh, that is in the description so far we've broken down the uh, cover three, the cloud flats, the, the seam flat zones, and the vertical hook zone, which is what we're going to talk about in this video a little bit. Uh, but we've get, and we've also covered match defense in there. Again, we're going to continue to add. So the next couple things we're going to be adding is we're going to be adding in uh, ten yard curl flat zones as opposed to ten yard seam flat zones, thirty yard hard flat zones as opposed to thirty yard cloud flat zones. And on and on so we've got a lot of really good stuff coming for you and it's really going to enhance your knowledge of the game we're going to be talking a lot about cover four and why i think cover four might be the best coverage shell in madden especially from the cover four show to if you know what you're doing we'll have videos uh coming on that stuff so oh, without further ado let's talk about this spacing concept this is a phenomenal play and uh, i can't wait to dive into this so this is empty tray stack um, I, you don't have to be an empty tray stack. I personally just prefer this um, just because it's easier because they're all, the receivers are all spread out. And that's really what you want. Um, now, real quick, coaching adjustments. Let me just show you what I've got. I got 30, 10, and 10. I think this is the best way to play zone drops in the game, at least for the majority of the way people play. And we're talking specifically about the Mike Blitz 3 with vertical hook to the trip side, which I think is one of the best zone adjustments you can make. So uh, I'm going to put, just for the purpose of the video, I'm going to put double stick in our audibles if in case we need to go to that. Um, but we're going to be spending most of the time today talking about this play here, Curl Flat Salem. And in particular, we're going to be focusing in on the curl route uh, uh, to the slot receiver. Okay, so real quick, one of the things that is really important to understand if you're going to really understand this is you have to understand, number one, that zones work differently depending on which hash mark they're on and also depending on where they're at on the field. For example, if you take a look at this um, on the defensive side of the ball, you're going to see that this seam flat zone is going to play different when it's David as opposed to when it's Cockrell. Just like a cloud flat is going to play different if it's outside corner as opposed to the slot corner. So for this concept, most people are using Mabel coverage. And if you take a look at this vertical hook, you're going to notice that it really jets to the outside. Now, if I put um, the same guy in a three rec hook zone, you see that that three rec is really going to drop a little bit more over the middle of the field. And then lastly, if I were to put a hook curl from my linebacker, you see that it, it doesn't quite get as far outside as the vertical hook zone does. So that's kind of the thinking behind this. And so um, really the, where we're going to start is we're going to start with a hitch. Um, you've all seen this concept before. Um, this is a curl to the X receiver, a hitch to the uh, R1 receiver, and we're going to put a five yard out to Brown. And what you're going to see happen is this yellow zone. I want you to really watch what this yellow zone does. You're going to notice here that the yellow zone, because there is a tight end in his grid, really important point, is going to go defend the tight end route, okay, as we kind of maybe expected that to be the case. Now, uh, what you're going to notice as well, though, is you're going to notice that the seam flat zone, and I want to jump into this replay and really show this, the seam flat zone is going to be a little bit different than maybe we thought it would be in this, in this uh, play. If you take a look at this, this guy, um, this linebacker is in a seam flat. He's flowing out. Look, he's in. there's somebody in his grid, and he is now sitting on this hitch, which actually leaves the out route wide open. 
Now I want to show you a little mechanic that you can use to manipulate a seam flat, and that is this idea of, again, if you think about seam, seam is translation into the vertical side of the field. So seam flat plays vertical to flat. It plays deep to short. That's kind of the thinking. So if you have a deeper route to pull a seam flat, it's going to help you. So the way that we can do that from this, uh, this formation and create really good spacing, uh, in my opinion, is by simply taking... And I'm going to leave this hook curl on here just to show this. Um, by simply taking this circle receiver, and we're going to put a hitch out there, and we're going to put a curl out there. But now what we're going to do is we're going to put a smart routed out route. And this smart routed out route, what you're going to see is now, look how wide open my hitch is. Now my hitch rod is wide open. Why? Because the smart routed out route decided to pull that seam flat zone out of the way. And as you can see, the vertical hook is still getting held down in the middle because of the grid system. If you take a look, watch this real quick. You're going to see that the tight or the this look at this vertical hook. Look who he guards. Somebody's in his grid, so he takes the tight end. Okay. Now the seam flat. This is really the trick. You see here this because he's going 10 yards. This is a 10 yard seam flat. This is a 10 yard out out route. He's vertical. He's more vertical than a hitch, so that the the seam flat plays his rule of vertical to short. So watch, he continues to flow out to try to defend this, and it leaves this wide open, okay? This is a really pivotal concept, a really pivotal thing, I think, to understand. And now we can take that same principle and apply it to the left side of the field as well to create a really, really hard to stop play. Uh, really, really hard to stop play, especially in zone coverage. So I said in the beginning of this video that zones work a little bit differently depending on the side of the field that they are. Vertical hook is no different. A vertical hook zone, please pay very attention to what I'm about to say. A vertical hook zone, this is why I like curl flat Salem. If you take a look at the hitch, you notice that the hitch is a little bit angled to the outside. If I put him on a hitch, you're going to see he's vertical. He's a little bit more inside. The reason that I like curl flat Salem is because here's your rule of thumb. A vertical hook will play from, pay attention here real quick. He'll play from this hash, watch David. He's gonna play from this hash mark right here to the numbers, to the inside of the numbers, okay? So if he's on a hitch route, and I'm gonna show this by taking, uh, I'm gonna take X and just move him, get him out of the way. Watch the vertical hook. See how he runs out to R1? Once the X receiver vacates the middle of the field, the reason he wasn't doing it prior to this was because the X receiver was on a curl. When the X receiver is on a streak and he gets out of the grid of the vertical hook, the vertical hook then goes to the next man and his outside grid, which just so happens to be that hitch route, um, which is inside or which is, which is why I like curl flat Salem because that hitch route is angled to the outside, meaning it's gonna get outside of the numbers. So to show this, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take um, this tight end and I'm just going to simply uh, put him on a flat route just to show what I'm kind of getting at here. And I want you to watch what happens to the R1. I'm gonna put him on a hitch and look, watch that vertical hook, see where he's at? He's in that grid and he goes just to the numbers and then he kind of stops right there. Okay, we unpack this a lot more in our defensive encyclopedia, which if you want to get access to that, that is down in the description of this video. But what you're going to see now is I'm going to leave him on this outside hitch route, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. The only thing that's changing is what hitch route he's on. Now he's on an outside angled hitch, and now look at this. The yellow zone can't get out there. Um, I can throw that with an outside pass lead. If I had Gunslinger, it probably would have been a little bit better, but that's the idea. So furthermore, if you continue to kind of go down that rabbit hole, now what you can do is say, okay, what can I put the X receiver on that is going to hold that yellow zone so that I can still throw the hitch? And I'll show you one more time here. If I have this, let me just show you this hitch. He's angled to the outside, just pass it just all the way out there to the right. And of course, I'm eating my words. But long story short, you shouldn't even have to do that because you can use a post route or something to hold that yellow zone. But just the idea here, and if I motion him, if I motion him in and then motion him out, you'll see a big difference in where he's gonna end up. And I will get him out there just enough. Um, but part of this is because I'm bringing Rukowski and putting him on a flat, I'm really pulling the yellow zone to him. But you see here again, just getting way out there. See, now he's outside enough. And now you see the vertical, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's getting him out there more is really the idea, okay? We're gonna use that same principle now to the left side. So. Uh, I'm going to put a vertical hook out there. The vertical hook zone, uh, just for reference, is the widest a yellow zone can get. 
So you have three rec, which is very middle focused. Well, mid read is the most intermediate. It's going to be very middle focused. Three rec is the next tier of that. Hook curl is the next tier of that. And then now we have the vertical hook. The vertical hook is the best zone in the game for defending hitches. Best zone in the game for defending hitches. It's really actually a pretty good zone as well for defending uh, slot curl routes and stuff like that. Okay. So now let's let's shift our gears to the back side of this. And we're going to be able to basically see the same idea. Okay, so all we're going to do, and it's actually even better to the left side because remember what I said in the beginning of this video, a vertical hook zone will play hash mark to numbers. It will not play outside of the numbers at all. It will not ever play outside of the numbers at all. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take triangle and I'm going to put him on a hitch route just like this. And then I'm going to smart route the square receiver. What I've created is I've created a hitch and out set, a hitch and an out concept on the short side of the field. Remember, short side of the field, the zones play a little bit differently. So what you're going to see is that yellow zone is still going to play to the numbers. He's not going to go over that, even though he dropped way more on the wide side. This is because zones work differently based off of the hash and also based off of their grid system, which again, we unpack a lot in that defensive encyclopedia. So watch this. This is really important tip. Watch this. I'm going to motion Evans out on the out. Watch this yellow zone. He stops really important that he stops. I'm going to jump into this replay and kind of break this down a little bit. The yellow zone will literally stop at the numbers. He will not move past the numbers. Let's dive into this real quick. I think this is a huge tip. Watch what happens. He's dropping back and look, literally freezes. There's a receiver that is literally like 0.5 centimeters to the left of him. And watch, he's standing still and frozen. There's a receiver right next to him. He will not go. Why? Because the grid system has cut him off from defending the hitch zone, even though he should defend that. He's not going to defend that. I can throw it every single time with a simple outside pass lead, low point, and I'm going to be able to go. Remember, we talked about the seam flat. Same thing. Now watch. This is a seam flat defender. Watch what happens. Ten-yard out route. See how he sits here? Then he realizes, look, and pay attention. At the point at which this guy goes past five yards, at the point at which Mike Evans goes past five yards, watch. He is now flowing past right here. Now, oh, that's a vertical route. I got to go get that. That's in my grid. I got to get out there. And now you've left the hitch wide open. Okay? That is how powerful this concept really is. It is virtually unguardable. They can't guard both sides of the field. And we've basically broken the, the, the grid system so the spacing is literally perfect. That's why I personally choose five wide, and I'm probably going to be choosing that in Madden 22 um, unless trips tight end is just as good as it is this year. Either five wide or trips tight end is where I'm leaning spread-based offense. Why? Because of this grid. If you can master this grid and really understand why these zones do what they do, you're going to have a, a ton of fun. I've got vertical hooks on both sides of the field, guys. I've got vertical hooks on both sides of the field, and they, neither one of them will stop it. Let's, let me show you what I'm talking about. So again, I'm just going to run the concept just like this. And just for purpose of explanation, what I would recommend doing, and I, I didn't get my adjustment off. It's not going to matter. I can still throw that hitch on, on the left. I can throw that hitch against anything. Any coverage in the game, I can throw that hitch route against, which I think is incredible to have a have a play like that because it's such a simple read it's really good against the blitz but now i want to just shift for which one second i want to talk about this tight end route you can leave the tight end on the vertical if you don't have hot route master if you have hot route master i would recommend putting him on a post the reason why i like to put him on a post is because he's going to pull the user the yellow zone is never going to get out there because that post is going to suction him back inside because of the grid the, the guy's never, ever, ever going to defend that. And so the user is now really put into no man's land. He can't get out and defend this thing. So now what, you've, what you're left with, and you can leave him on the vertical. Let me show you that real quick. So you can leave him on the vertical. I'm going to use two vertical hooks and two seam flats. And I would challenge you right now, if you're watching this video, you think what I'm saying is bullcrap, go out and test it for yourself. Try to find me a zone that will cover the R1 receiver. Try to find it. You won't find it. I guarantee it, especially on both sides. You won't be able to stop both sides, no matter what you do. And watch, watch what happens here. See how that? See how the vertical? See, see how the uh, the streak pulls him in, even though we got the best block shed of all time on the defensive side of the ball. He will pull him in every single time. So even if even if this guy right here is the user and he's in the middle of the field on a hook curl, 
it doesn't matter. The vertical hook, because of the grid system, because of the grid system, the vertical hook will get pulled every single time. And so you're going to have this hitch all day long. They'll never defend it. And you're going to have an easy five to 10 yards every single time, no matter what the defense does from a zone perspective. So what's their solution? Their solution is to go man to man. The problem is that's where this, uh, this other side comes in. This two wide receivers here on the left, worst possible plan. Why? Because this motion down out route is probably the best man beater in the game. You see there just a consistent 13 to 15 yards. And so this is why five wide is so good, but you have to understand the grid system. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to get the um, the defensive encyclopedia where you actually break down exactly what these zones do. It's gonna help you on both sides. You're gonna now know, okay, now it makes sense. So my opponent's hitting me with a slant. What zones covers that? We go over that in the guide. So. Thanks for watching this video. I really hope you implement something like this into your, into your scheme. Really the big takeaway, run your hitches outside the numbers. Short side hitches are better than wide side hitches primarily because it's easier to get a short side hitch outside the numbers. If you can get a short side hitch outside the numbers, pair that with a 10 yard out route and it'll get open every single time. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out via text message. And if you wanna get my defensive encyclopedia or my route concept encyclopedia, the route concept encyclopedia is where we really dive into the offensive side of things. And we actually break down concepts that you can use from any formation. Um, you can get either one of those in the description. I'm gonna put both of them down below. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys had, uh, ho hope you guys had a great time and have a great rest of your day.